advertisement, mentioning that humans should be given a second chance. It then talks about a pharmaceutical company called Pinnacle Corporation that is apparently helping the world become a better place. Following this, the scene shifts to an underground bunker-like place where a bunch of people are lying on the floor. Soon, two of them, Irina and Pasha, wake up. They have no recollection of the past or how they ended up there. To make the situation more creepy, they find other unconscious humans lying around the place. Terrified, Irina and Pasha try to find a way out of the place, but to no avail. Suddenly, the other humans also regain consciousness. Even they have no idea how they ended up here. Ooh, that must have been one hell of a New Year's party. While trying to locate a way out of the place, two other people, Natasha and Sasha, enter the bathroom and find a guy hiding inside. He introduces himself as Nerd and starts laughing like a maniac, saying they are going to die soon. Shortly after, a fierce young man, Valera, asks all 11 people to gather around and try to remember the moments just before their kidnapping. Natasha mentions that she was having a normal day with her family and friends. The very next thing she remembers is waking up in this desolate place. As the discussion goes on, Nerd notices a camera in the room and tells everyone that they're being watched. Elsewhere, in the busy streets, an old man, Mr. Randomsky, can be seen speaking over the phone with someone, asking them to leave the city as soon as possible. Later, he receives a call from a random number, informing him that his daughter has been kidnapped and is in danger. Randomsky is then asked to arrive in the lab within an hour if he wants to see his daughter alive. Having no other choice, he agrees. Back in the underground bunker, Sasha and and Irina find some old photographs of doctors and deduce that the place used to be a research lab, or probably an operation theater, or maybe a place for sex parties. At the same time, Pasha, Nerd, and another guy, Mitya, enter the cold storage room and find a lot of powdered food there. This makes Mitya realize that whoever brought them here is planning on keeping them for a long time. However, Nerd, being a pessimist, asserts that the food is being poisoned. To test the theory, Mitya brings the food to the other room and places it on the table. Valera immediately picks it up and starts eating it. When Mitya sees that the food is showing no side effects on Valera, he too joins in and starts eating some corn puffs. Meanwhile, Sasha and Irina are searching for the operation theater, and it looks like they have found it. They open a hidden door, and inside, find an operation bed, with some tools and belongings of a child nearby. Irina, who seems to be a surgeon, immediately recognizes the tools and informs the others that they are used to amputate body parts. After a while, everyone leaves the room, but Nerd, along with a mischievous guy, Xenia, continue their investigation. Nerd tries to smell a suspicious powder from the table, but Xenia blows on it and sprays the powder all over Nerd's face. This suffocates the latter, causing him to cough profusely. To make the situation worse, Xenia walks out of the room and closes the door, trapping Nerd inside. Fortunately, Irina and Natasha arrive just in time and open the door. At this point, Nerd is coughing up blood and suffocating horribly. Seeing his condition, all of them are terrified and start blaming the mischievous Xenia. Elsewhere, as Radomsky is being taken away in a van, he suddenly attacks the guards, resulting in a minor brawl. During the commotion, an important vial kept inside a box rolls over and falls into a hole. Then it collides with a fan and breaks. The contents of the vial start flowing until it reaches a railway station, where a lot of people are waiting for their train to arrive. Surprisingly, all of them start losing their senses and fall to the ground one by one. In the next scene, a news channel reports that an unknown substance has been spilled at a station, causing thousands of people to suffer from symptoms like high fever and poor eyesight. It also mentions that the mortality rate of the disease is high and that the government is trying its best to keep it under control. Meanwhile, inside the Pinnacle Corporation headquarters, an employee enters the CEO, Mr. Glotov's office and informs him about the escape of Randomsky. He also mentions that the virus inside the vial they were after has been destroyed and people around the city are suffering from it. Enraged, Glotov yells at the employee and asks him to find Randomsky at any cost. He also mentions that the information about their secret project, Clayton, should not get leaked. Furthermore, no one should know about the Pinnacle Corporation, which experiments on genetic mutations and ravages the city with viruses. Elsewhere, Sasha continues searching around the bunker and finds some photographs where the doctors are wearing aprons containing the logo of the Pinnacle Corporation. Seeing this, he immediately calls the others to the room and tries to make them understand that they are being trapped by Pinnacle for some reason. Sasha also talks about Project Clayton, which he found while he and his team tried to hack the main servers of the corp. 
Sadly, none of them believe in his words and walk away. What reason could they possibly have not to believe him? <laughs> On the other hand, we see the whole city being evacuated while Randomsky roams around the streets, still alive. At the Pinnacle Corporation's office, Glotov's employee reveals that the virus does not seem to affect young women and that it will be ineffective after a day. Hearing this, Glotov asks him to shut down all communication networks in all of Moscow. Later, Randomsky arrives at an evacuation spot and tries to get the attention of an officer. He reveals that he is one of the creators of the virus and that the Pinnacle Corporation is behind all of this. Unfortunately, the officer does not listen to him as he is busy evacuating the place. When Randomsky continues insisting that he's telling the truth, he is apprehended for disturbing the officers. Meanwhile, Nerd, who is resting in the so-called bedroom, suddenly gets a vision of the doctors trying to perform an experiment on him. As Marina was talking to a nurse in his vision, Nerd assumes that she is a spy who is leaking their information to the bad guys. Hence, he approaches Marina holds her at knife point and asks her to reveal the truth. Despite everyone asking him to leave her alone, Nerd does not listen and simply keeps saying that Marina is helping the doctors to conduct their experiments. Fortunately, before he could harm Marina, Mitya cleverly grabs his knife from behind and beats him to a pulp. After the incident, Nerd is taken to the other room and tied up while Irina treats his wounds. She inquires if he wants some water, but Nerd, who has started becoming paranoid, says that she is also a spy who just wants to poison him. Later, while everyone is is discussing what to do with Nerd, the stylish and arrogant lady of the group, Nadia, suggests they kill him. She claims that Nerd might have been infected by a contagious disease, and that's why he's been acting so weird. A few of them agree, but Irina, Sasha, and Natasha completely shun the idea. Shortly after, when Marina heads to the bedroom, she finds Nerd in an unresponsive condition. Terrified, she screams for help and informs everyone about the situation. Irina immediately rushes inside and tries to perform CPR on him, but to no avail. Everyone realizes that he has died and walks out of the room sadly. R.I.P. Get wrecked, nerd. Shortly after, the alpha male of the group, Valera, mentions that if they want to get out of this place alive, they have to act fast. For the first step, he suggests that they smash the CCTV cameras and convey their messages to the people who are keeping them hostage. The entire group agrees with the decision, so they start breaking all the cameras one after another. Now, they are all waiting for a response. Meanwhile, a boy can be seen driving his car and approaching the border of the city. When he tries to enter the city, a group of army officers stop him and ask him to return. However, he refuses, claiming that his sister is trapped inside, and so he has to rescue her. When the officers once again refuse him, the boy returns to his car, drives it at full speed, and breaks the barrier to enter the city. On the other hand, a middle-aged man named Sergei hears Randomsky screaming for help and comes to his rescue. The latter is finally released, but he still has the handcuffs on him. Nonetheless, the two walk outside together and witness the destruction around the city with dead bodies lying in the middle of the streets. After a while, Sergei spots a bar and suggests they check it out. Inside, he serves a drink to Randomsky and tries to open his handcuffs with a cork remover. In the following scene, the boy who broke the border barrier earlier, Max, stops his car in front of a building and rushes inside of it to search for his sister. He knocks on the apartment door but does not get any answer. Hence, he leaves the building and enters the nearby hospital where Irina used to work. After walking around for a bit, Max spots a doctor running away from a surgeon room. He quickly approaches the doctor and inquires about his sister. However, rather than answering his question, the doctor reveals that he is infected and asks Max to stay away from him. Saying this, he injects himself with a syringe and dies on the spot. Back in the underground bunker, the group decides to store Nerd's corpse inside the freezer. After they do so, Irina places a cloth over his face and sits beside the corpse. She is still distraught over the fact that she couldn't save Nerd. Seeing her in this state, Mitya approaches her and tries to make her understand Understand that it wasn't her fault that Nerd died. He also mentions that people are born to die and that it's a natural process. As the two are deeply immersed in their conversation, the door of the freezer automatically closes and they are trapped inside. Irina and Mitya scream for help, but no one can hear them. Realizing that they are going to freeze to death, Mitya suggests that they hug each other to keep themselves warm. Irina agrees without any hesitation and the two cozy up. One thing leads to another and they are about to kiss, but just then, Pasha opens the door looking for food. Meanwhile, Mitya rushes to confront Xenia, assuming that he is the one who locked them in the freezer. As expected, the latter denies it, but Mitya is not going to let up so easily. He gathers everyone around a table and tries to find out the real culprit. During their discussion, Valera mentions that someone among them is a snitch who is transmitting information to the people who trapped them there. Hearing this, Nadia adds that whosoever is the snitch must be a skilled person, as the kidnappers wouldn't just hire a useless person. She then looks around the table and points 
once at Irina, saying that she is the smartest one amongst them. She can perform experiments and surgeries, something which would be of great importance to the kidnappers. Hearing this, the entire group turns on her and inquires about her past, but Irina refuses to speak and walks away, adding more fuel to the already existing suspicion. She locked herself in the freezer so that she could bone Mitya. Yeah. The scene then shifts to the bar, where Randomsky wakes up from his hangover. Sergei is nowhere to be found, but it is revealed that he has managed to take off the handcuffs. After a while, Randomsky begins searching for Sergei, only to find him lying dead in the kitchen. It turns out he was already infected with the virus. Back in the underground bunker, Mitya confronts Nadia inside the bathroom and asks for some narcotics. When she refuses to have any, he grabs her by the neck and kisses her. Following this, the two start undressing and get intimate, unbeknownst to the fact that Xenia is filming all of this, hiding inside one of the toilets. Later, while everyone is busy discussing, Nadia arrives there wearing a towel and attacks Xenia, suspecting that he is the one who turned off the shower. Right then, Natasha emerges from the other room and informs everyone that there is no water in the bunker. Even the freezer has been turned off. Terrified, they quickly collect the remaining bottles of water and walk out of the freezer. Elsewhere, we see a group of high-ranking officials discussing the city situation. They are regretting the fact that they handed over their top-secret project, Clayton, to Glotov. Back at the bunker, the group gathers around the table and tries to ration the remaining bottles of water. However, Valera becomes aggressive and tells everyone that from now on, he will be in charge of the food and water supplies. As everyone there stares at him in anger, Pasha concludes that they are getting punished for smashing the cameras. That can't be it. How would they even know that they smashed the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Wasting no time, Sasha and Xenia start repairing a camera and eventually succeed. They then try to ask their kidnappers to turn on the freezer and also the water supply. Unfortunately, rather than listening to their requests, a loud irritating noise is played in the bunker, compelling them to cut all the electric wires. Meanwhile, Sasha puts his hand over the bathroom's ventilation and deduces that the air supply has also been cut off. Elsewhere, as Randomsky is searching for his daughter around the place, Max runs into him and together they hide inside a building. Once they reach a safe location, Randomsky reveals that he is one of the scientists who created the virus. He was pressured by a group of evil men whose only agenda was power and wealth. Randomsky then pleads with Max to help him find his daughter, but the boy refuses, saying he doesn't help terrorists. In the next scene, Glotov meets with the high-ranking officials and apologizes for his mistake. He also lies to them that Randomsky is already dead. Glotov then assures the officials that he is very serious about their mission and that he can never betray them. Saying this, he walks away, but not before telling the officials to make a decision on his future. Meanwhile, desperate to get out of the bunker, Valera starts scavenging through the storage room to find something useful. Eventually, he finds some materials that could help him prepare a bomb. Valera then approaches the other group members and explains his plan. He wants to use the bomb to blow up one of the exit doors. Although the mission is a dangerous one, the group is willing to take the risk, so they agree. With this, Valera, along with the help of Xenia, starts preparing the bomb. Right then, the radio transmitter in the room starts working. A man narrates that the virus has ruined the entire city, thousands of people have died, and millions more are infected. This shocks everyone in the room, and even believe that the underground bunker is a boon to them. Nonetheless, they continue with the bomb experiment and fit it on one of the bunker's exit doors. The episode ends with Valera sticking a cigarette to light up the bomb and everyone else waiting for it to explode. We're going to continue this one in series recap, so be sure to check it out.